Small screen. <laughs> okay. Well, we're starting out great, aren't we? <laughs> oh, no. You missed one I had the other day. Um, so for those of you who don't know, instead of, like, miniature mode, where the, um, the meeting that we have is, you know, tiny and I couldn't find it, I said the, the Zoom meeting went small screen on me. But <laughs> last night when we were playing D&Ds, I was trying to describe um, a ceiling with rafters, right? Like a vaulted okay. ceiling. Okay. And I said, open ceiling concept. <laughs> well, well, man, welcome, uh, listeners, to the BDSM podcast. Who's there smoking meats? We are uh, enjoying this lovely uh, opening for, yep. for you today. Um, Professor Porkline, I'm here with my awesome co host. The meat Viking, and uh, we are continuing the journey. We're we're getting pretty close to getting to the end. I mean, we're we're at almost the end end of ends, and then we'll get into you know the the back end of the states, man. Yeah. Uh, not to spoil our safe word, but I'm gonna cape right here for a second. Um, are you like tapping your microphone? No. Why? Oh, you just kept cutting in and out, and it sounded like uh, you were tapping your mic. Oh, no, definitely not. Oh, who knows? Maybe it'll pass. <clears throat> the two shall pass. Right. So. so. But, uh, yeah, we are going to hit up North Carolina, right? Yeah. Throw your hands up. <laughs> Any of my listeners out there know that song? I wish I didn't, but I do. <laughs> <laughs> so now have you gonna... been to been to the carolina the north oh one? yeah I've, oh i've been to both so yeah. we get to south carolina talk about that too right but, i enjoy yeah, north, north carolina. carolina yeah it's a nice state yeah so uh you, you kind of mentioned what the safe word is for the day so cape right yep but uh what's the what's the bottle that you opened up I think we've talked about this one before. It is an Imperial Chocolate Hazelnut Porter from oh, yeah. Whole Hog, and it is the Hazelnut Brownie Porter. Nice. Yeah. I, uh, I have a couple cans left before I need to buy some else, so I, I have a yingling. Nice. Can't go wrong. But I do have to say that my mother-in-law is going to be visiting the, the good old state of Kentucky and uh, even though we've already talked about Kentucky, I told her that she needs to stop off at a couple of these breweries. And so with it in like three weeks time, so the next couple, not the next couple sessions, but I will definitely be enjoying some good Kentucky beer and I'll have to report out on all the stuff. So I am all for that. So I worked um, yesterday, but, you know, the Shield Maiden of Meats had the day off, and so she <laughs> went to um, get us some some beer, and I just went for my tried and trues. So I got the uh, Total Eclipse Breakfast Stout, and she Ooh, actually found nice. a uh, a four pack of the Pseudo Sue IPA from Toppling Goliath. Oh, okay. Even though I'm not a IPA drinker, that's a very good IPA. So. Instead of trying something right. different, we just went for some tried and true. Yeah, nothing wrong with that, though. Yeah. Well, cool. So, uh, North Carolina, you've you've been. So, I've been. Um, what's what's one of the first things that you uh, looked up for North Carolina? Honestly, you can't go wrong with that North Carolina barbecue. That's true. So. And in particular, the Lexington style barbecue. See, now I haven't had the Lexington style, so I'll defer to you on that one. It's like sweet and tangy. Um, it's a vinegar based blend with ketchup, salt, and some pepper in there. And, you know, whatever else they try to um, throw in there. But 
you use your basic port shoulder and it's just so good it's like that sweet hot you know what i'm saying yeah kind of like the tennessee yeah uh, you know chicken mm-hmm so interesting yeah i uh i mean we've talked about barbecue before so the, i the, what's the lexington one no um, but i'm just talking about barbecue in general right but um bobby flay has visited this and i think he posted an episode on it on barbecue with barbie flay bobby flay <laughs> so if anybody wants to look a little further in depth into this by somebody with some uh better credentials always can look at Bobby Flay and see his opinion on it. See, I watch a lot of Bobby Flay stuff. Like, beat Bobby Flay, uh, that barbecue showdown, and then, you know, I remember him when he was on uh, Iron Chef. Yeah. So, I've, I've seen a lot of his other stuff, and, man, he he's, comes up with some good stuff. He does. So, I would trust his opinion on the barbecue on that one. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, we've talked about some of the barbecue stuff before about the shoulder and, uh, you know, the ribs and, um, and how, how different that could be with even the, uh, the St. Louis barbecue, you know, and then even, what was it? Was it Alabama? I think it was Alabama. We were talking about the, the white barbecue. White sauce. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's kind of cool how different parts of the, the country have their own different style on it but then you know it all comes down to you're you're basically basting the crap out of that meat for 12 hours 16 hours and letting it slow roast and it's just saying well am i doing it off of charcoal or am i doing it off of wood or what so yep but <laughs> well i know for myself when i did a little bit of some research uh, and I didn't realize that for North Carolina, and this has got to be one of my favorite places to go, and you can you can get them just about anywhere in the states. Uh, and I think I think Ohio, where you live, wound up getting one a couple of years back. But the the old Krispy Kreme donuts. Yep, there's actually one in the town that I live in. Yeah, I thought so, and I remember I left before that came out, but I. Uh, I remember talking to some people and saying that when that thing opened up, the line going out the door was crazy. Honestly, there are some uh, Sundays where, like, I'll meet up with a friend and we'll go to one of the pancake houses that are right by where that Krispy Kreme's at. Yeah. And it's always a line there still. Well, for people that don't know Krispy Kreme, if you've been living underneath the rock forever, I mean, they've got the hot light. And yeah. there was always one um, by my parents' house that whenever that hot light was on, we stopped, no matter what. Like, yep. if the hot light was on, we we're getting ourselves two dozen donuts because we were eating at least six of them before we even got out of the parking lot. Yeah. You know? And it's really cool because they're super warm and gooey and uh, – that's the, the downside of it is that you can totally eat five to yourself when they're warm like that. And it started in old Salem, North Carolina. So definitely an international sensation. Uh, I don't know about you, but did you remember doing fundraising with those things? No, because we never had like a Krispy Kreme near us until I moved up here in which I would have been of adult age when we don't do fundraising. Uh, well, <laughs> um, I remember doing some of that fundraising though. And man, was it fun? Uh, no, it wasn't fun going around, but it was fun eating all of it. Mm -hmm. um, basically you'd be able to uh, get a couple dozen, like you'd, you'd have the sign up sheet essentially. And it'd be like, Hey, how many dozen donuts do you want? And you know, people would be able to buy them. So they weren't hot, but you'd roll into school and they'd have all of them delivered and you'd just see stacks and stacks of donuts. <clears throat> but, good good smelling school day. Oh, yeah. And the crazy thing is, too, is that uh, 
you know, even though they weren't the hot donuts, you could always just throw them in the microwave for like five seconds and it'd heat them right up. And that, you know, it's basically like eating the same thing. Yeah. <clears throat> so, but uh, I like the original just glazed donut, but they also have other flavors too. Um, they've, they've got a chocolate one. They've got, you know, like a Boston cream style. So they have other donuts. <clears throat> but I can guarantee you that they're famous for just their glazed donuts. Oh, yeah, for sure. Now, did you ever watch uh, How It's Made? Do you remember that show? Yeah, I've seen plenty of How It's Made. Did you ever see the one where they talked about donuts and how they're made? I did not. So, you know, besides making all the, the yeast and whatnot, they basically shape it out. And I really love the conveyor belt that they have. So it essentially takes the donuts and just puts them – right into the uh, the oil, and then it flips them over for you, so you don't even have to worry about it, and then it goes right onto another conveyor belt where it just gets freaking slimed with that um, that glaze. And boom, there you go. You got yourself, uh, what do they say they make? They make like like a thousand or something per, per half hour or some crap like that. They do a bunch. Oh, wow. So... Listeners, if you do have a Krispy Kreme near you, go grab one if uh, if that hot light is on. Yeah, buddy. So, what's what's you got uh, coming up next? I think we're going to continue with the sweet tooth here. Um, talk about some uh, peach cobbler. Yeah. Ooh. See, we've we've talked about some of those things too before with like apple pie and whatnot. I can yeah. get down with a peach cobbler, but it's not going to be my numero uno. Fair. So, but apparently they do, um, oh my god, I just lost my whole train of thought. <laughs> like peach cobbler with like biscuits and stuff for breakfast. Okay, I can see that. Yeah. So, and um, North Carolina is actually ninth. In U.S. production of peach cobbler, so you have it rather in abundance. So, um, but I I enjoy me some peach cobbler, so that's why I wanted to give that a shout out. Nothing can be better than getting one of those diner cobblers, or to be honest with you, any dessert. Yeah. Did you, ever, uh, did you ever go into the diner and they have it in, like, a showcase? And yeah. you can walk up and just be like, yeah, you're coming home with me. Or you're, you're like, yeah, I'm going to have a slice of you later. You just wait. And you can, like, touch the glass. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> you're, like a, you're like a little kid just going, mmm, I, I, I got gotcha. you. You're, you're going to be mine. <laughs> or what is it? Uh, Wayne's World, when he's like, Oh, she will be mine. Yes, mm -hmm. she will be mine. <laughs> she will be mine. <laughs> I'm kind of um, curious to know how many diners are in North Carolina that serve peach cobbler. I would assume quite a few. Almost any mom and pop type restaurant, I would assume, would have peach cobbler. Yeah. Especially if you're, you know, in the top 10% of peach production in the U.S., Yep. So, I'm curious to know if they do other things with peaches as well. You know, if they do like a, if they use a peach beer, or if they'll do some other type of peach, you know, whiskey or some crap like that. You know. Um, I've had peach whiskey before, but I don't remember where it came from. Okay. Uh... Well, peach cobbler. One of the favorites. So the brand I have had was Bird Dog, and that is based off Kentucky bourbon. So that does not qualify for North Carolina. No. Close, though. Close, Close. state, depending on where you get it. Yeah. So. But, like, you can do so much stuff with peach. You can make peach moonshine. Um, apparently it's a Jack Daniels sour peach or southern peach. So 
for you peach fans and you alcohol fans, you have options. There's always options. Yeah. <laughs> but, well, I feel like I'm going to go back down to the appetizer side because okay. this is also another one of my favorites. And I, if I can find them, and this is probably getting to be perfect season for them coming up soon, so I'll be excited for that. But uh, if I can find it at a diner, if I can find it anywhere, I am going to get fried green tomatoes. Mm. They are my favorite summertime like appetizer and again if i see it on the menu it's an automatic i'm getting it yeah so it's, it's man the cornmeal that that you dredge it in and just get it just enough now i usually have uh i like a nice dipping sauce with it okay the places i used to work at in the restaurants they would always have like a nice sweet spicy dipping sauce Mm-hmm. So, you know, just chop it up a little bit and then boom, you got yourself a little boat to dip that bad boy in. And I've had ones that have had like goat cheese on top of it. And that's not a bad addition either. But uh, I think my favorite though is using those fried green tomatoes to make like a grilled cheese. Oh, yeah. yeah. And so if, if I get, again, any opportunity where it's like fried green tomatoes, you know damn well I'm on that. <laughs> So, um, man, I apparently it started in Chapel Hill. There's a community out that way, and it's the best option that you can get for fried green tomatoes. Chapel now, um, yeah, I'm also kind of curious to know, like, how the those fried green tomatoes meet up with other southern states. You know, would with fried green tomatoes in North Carolina, where it's it's the hey, we are known for these, good for Texas, good for, you know, South Carolina or Georgia. And I wonder who reigns supreme on that. You know, that's a good question. Because, like, you don't get fried green tomatoes much where I'm at. It's rather rare. Yeah. So, I do miss that. I miss me some good fried green tomatoes. I miss me fried okra. Oh, that's a huge, huge thing where I'm at. And I mean, yeah. you know that too. So, oh, yeah. and, and I think once we get to Texas, we'll be able to have maybe a three-parter just from all the stuff we'd be able to talk about. So. Oh, yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> but imagine having like the, you know, the basketball is coming, is about now. So imagine having the, the, the brackets for, what place has the best fried green tomatoes? And you can even go so far as to have like so many diners in the east and the in the west brackets and whatnot, and just have them go from Texas, Kentucky, like anything in the southern region. Yeah. Here you go. You put your your best foot forward to see who reigns supreme. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the March Green Tomato Madness. Yeah. I I'd, I'd vote. I I'd try it. I wouldn't care. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. So, uh, what, what do you got up next? Um, I'm going to take your appetizer, and I'm going to move on to a main course. Okay. With fried catfish. You can get catfish uh, in a lot of different places. So... That's um, true. You know? It's super popular in the Carolinas. It is. So, because when I worked in a restaurant, like, where I'm from, if you're getting fried fish of any site, it's most likely going to be um, cod. Yeah. I, depending on the season, you probably get some walleye, too. But Yeah, well, that's when they're in season, and you're going to somewhat pay a premium on that like i think there's something with that more southern style cooking that their fried catfish just meets and exceed expectations you, you following me on this tangent here oh yeah so because like i've had fried catfish up here and like, i'm just gonna say it this way the recipe that 
North Carolina's ancestors pushed down is not the same that the uh, <laughs> the cold North ancestors pushed down, and it's like a night and day difference. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm just I'm being real with you. Well, what do you think makes that so much better? I mean, is there like a a certain spice that goes into the batter or what? So now just follow me on this. We know that there's a lot of like French influence in the cuisine that came up from like the Louisiana area. Yeah. And I think when they migrated more towards the northern ends and settled somewhere in like the Carolinas, they took how to prepare stuff like this with that French and Southern United States cuisine and just kind of blended the two into some sort of perfection. Because without looking at a recipe, I couldn't tell you what the difference is, but there's just something that makes it better. It would be like comparing a beer battered fish that uses, I'll just say Budweiser, right? Okay. Versus a beer battered fish that uses a stout. I'm not a Budweiser fan. I prefer stouts. I would naturally go towards the fried catfish with the stout. Oh man, I'm I'm like thinking about how that would really work out as a stout. Well, like I'm just I'm using that as an example because I haven't beer battered anything in a long time. Yeah. You know what I mean? <clears throat> yeah. Also, I mean, let's just be real here too. If you're getting fried fish from the North Carolinas, you're probably going to get that with hush puppies. Or or you're probably going to get it with some fried shrimp too. Yep. You, and, you know what? It's probably going to be a combo. Yeah. You're probably going to have the fried shrimp, the fried catfish, hush puppies, and there might even be some like macaroni and cheese or something too. Mm -hmm. Or you can top it off with some fried alligator. Um, I don't know. Is North Carolina really with stuff like a bayou style, like Louisiana? Yeah, actually it is. I would think probably by the coast for sure. And that's but... where I've been in North Carolina. Like that's yeah. really the only spot I've been is right on the coast. See, I don't remember having like the option to have fried gator in the in my adventures to North Carolina. But definitely the hush puppies, definitely uh you know the fried shrimp and everything. So yeah. So well, yeah. That's all right. that's usually the, the fish combo, right? Like here, give me a number five <laughs> with, with a sweet tea. So in, in my defense here with the fried alligator argument. I put I typed into the old Google machine North Carolina fried alligator and right near the place that we usually used to vacation at is Kill Devil Hills and okay. they are like the highest rated on TripAdvisor for the North Carolina fried alligator. So but there are several restaurants that do offer fried alligator. And if you haven't had it, you are missing out. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I feel like you can deep fry just about anything and make it just that much better. That's true. You know, because, I mean, obviously you got chicken fried steak, you know, uh, you can fry the alligator, you can fry, hell, you can probably even fry like bison and stuff. You've got a nice little, little pieces of it. So that's fair. And I mean, we've, Everyone's had wings before, so we all know that that makes wings that much better. So, <laughs> but yeah, I I can get behind some like a fried a fried dish, you know, catfish, shrimp, whatever else hush puppies they decide to put on there. Yeah, and. uh trying to think too normally some of those ones usually come in, like the best food comes from some you know beat down shack that's been there for the last 20 years 
yeah. and service in the place for forever, and it's like the local hotspot. Just be like, yeah, we come down here to get some some of the best fried catfish you ever you ever had. Yeah, <laughs> so good you smack your mama in the face. <laughs> I hate that that's an expression I've heard before while in North Carolina. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, I think to kind of go along with not necessarily the fried style for it, but, I mean, I think this is a big southern southern anything, but apparently North Carolina says that they're one of the better ones, and it's uh, the shrimp and grits. And you know, it started coming out as a as a breakfast, but it actually just started after that to become some cult classic to where you can just get shrimp and grits whenever. Mm-hmm. Have you ever cooked grits before? Not personally, no. Ah, uh, okay. So I mean, when you're cooking grits, you ca- you gotta let it like cook out. You know, you have to let it get nice and soft. And I think some people tend to not let it cook long enough and you don't get that nice creamy texture for it and you know the way that you can do the shrimp can be a variety of things but i feel for myself having just a nice little uh, spice to it have a little kick not not like creole style but having something to give it a nice little warm touch to it just makes that whole entire meal super good that's fair so and again you can you can get it anywhere i mean there's a place right down the road for me that has grits on their brunch menu and it's it's not too shabby you know the chef there definitely knows his thing but i've seen shrimp and grits all over the south and i've seen it up north too but i think you're right with the whole entire way the south versus the north cooks their stuff um because i i just don't know if i've had a full-on northern shrimp and grits that's like yeah i'm I'm gonna smack my mama it's so good you know (laughs) as somebody who's living in the north currently you know how rare it is to find grits on a menu anyways yeah you guys are more meat potatoes type deal you know stuff that's that's grown pretty regularly meat potatoes corn yeah and like (laughs) Granted, I lived in the South for a couple of years, and I'm probably more Southern than I am Northern um, as far as, like, my taste goes. Shrimp and grits, I would be a little cautious around if I saw that in, like, an Ohio menu. (laughs) That's simply because, like, dude, our shrimp's just not the same, you know? You'd be, like, going on an interview, right, asking them a bunch of questions. So, uh... Where did you learn how to cook shrimp and grits? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, where yeah. do you get your shrimp from? And or... I'm telling you right now, and you can cape me on this if you want, unless that dude served time and moved up here from the South himself to get away from his, like, terrible past, I'm not going to try it. <laughs> like, I need, like, ex-con on the run trying to get his life right. You need those type of grits. I need those type of grits. Flip side, you need one of the uh, you need one of those other ones where it's like Big Mama, you know, wound up losing the house or something and had to move up north. And oh yeah, for sure. All of the same recipes. <laughs> no bullshit. Like, I, can, I can see that one being just as good as convict shrimp and grits. No bullshit. That's how I got into fried green tomatoes and. Um, <laughs> Chicken livers. Yeah. Yeah, chicken livers. Yep. I, uh, there's a, we'll talk about it when we get to Pennsylvania, but there was a, a restaurant that I used to work at that would do chicken livers, and it was a hot commodity. It's so, not for everybody, but that's okay. It's not. It just makes more for me. But you put it in the right gravy, and you got yourself some good stuff. You know, I love you as a human being, but I'm already going to tell you you're wrong. (laughs) I don't know, man. You might have liked this gravy. (laughs) That's fair. But, yeah, so. Oh, what what other things did we happen to research 
Honestly, I've got like four or five more topics. Yeah, man. Well, do you want to fire, fire one up? Well, or do you I mean, want to like, our time at? Oh, uh, I think we're about 30 to 40 minutes right now. All right. Well, if you want to so, do one more thing and then kind of wrap up to do a part two, I'm down with that. Yeah. All right. So I think we're going to end on a note that I'm pretty sure all of us will agree isn't a bad thing here. And that is sweet potato pie. Oh, yeah. So North Carolina is the top U.S. producer of sweet potatoes, which I did not know. I did not know that either. So, and apparently there's an old tobacco town of Winston-Salem oh, that is yeah, now a yeah. uh, modern arts district. So, and it being an artsy place has all these, like, fancy chefs that kind of, like, flock towards there. And... Mm, dude, I love sweet potato pie. If I ever see that at like a grocery store, I almost always pick one up, and it only lasts like two to three days in my house. <laughs> You'd be like, uh, what, Cartman? You oh, ever see that episode? Bro, where I don't even give a fuck. Pie? Yeah. Or he's like, oh, I don't think I can eat anymore. Yes, I can. <laughs> yeah. But like, <laughs> the picture here, it just looks. Like this is this right here is like Southern Grandma in a in a photo. And I'm gonna actually screen share this. Does it have some like uh pecans on it? Yeah. Yeah. Like right, somebody's grandma made that dish for them and then they carried that on. Yes, they did. Yeah. What kind of uh, crust is that? Probably just regular crust. If I had to guess. Man, I I wonder I wonder if like a graham cracker crust or something would also enhance that flavor. Yeah. You know what? How maybe. I would have to try that on my own time. Maybe well, if you yeah. did like a, a caramel drizzle on the edge of the crust, just to add some extra flavor. But then again, it's not like an apple based. So I don't True. know if the two would mix. Mm, but well, I love me sweet potato pie, man. I really do. Yeah, sweet potato pie. Can't go wrong with that one. Yeah. And it's kind of funny that it's uh, in the old tobacco town of Winston Salem, you know? Mm -hmm. Like. The Winston Cup series, uh, freaking all the cigarettes. I mean, you can get yourself some cheap ass carton of cigarettes. And it's funny because when I was younger, you know, my parents, we'd always take little trips and whatnot down to Florida and everything. And we'd stop off at south of the border and we'd get stop off at all these little places. And you get closer to North and South Carolina and you start seeing all the freaking JR tobacco places and the Winston Sam tobacco places. And it's like family members who used to smoke would be like, oh, yeah, go ahead and buy us a couple cartons. We'll give you some money for it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And think about how tobacco is like a huge crop for for both of those states, you know? So I, this is kind of a little off topic, but I, I guarantee you that in the next 10 to 15 years, those tobacco crops are going to turn into marijuana crops, 100%. I hope so. <laughs> so, well, um, do you want to take us out and then we can get into part two going on in next week? Because uh, if you got a couple other things, I, I think I've got a couple other things too. Yeah. So uh, let us know if you've had southern versus northern catfish. What's your stance on chicken livers? Why am I right? And why is, you know, <laughs> <laughs> the professor wrong? Or have you had it both ways? Um, and I think we're going to save some, at least five or six other topics for next session. So yeah. I have been the Meat Viking along with my wonderful co-host, Professor Porkline. And we'll see you all in the next one. All right.